one who is and the one who is surely to come. We greet you in that name because there is peace in that name. We greet you in that name because there is joy in that name. We greet you in that name because there is celebration in that name. We greet you in that name because there is no other name given under the heavens by which we shall be saved. We greet you in the name of Jesus. We greet you on this Palm Sunday in the year of our Lord 2024. And we think it necessary to get started on the right track. If there's anybody here this morning glad to be alive on this side, let me invite you to just pause for a moment and give God glory, honor, and praise. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. It is a blessing to see so many. Look around and see the people who are present today. Point to somebody and tell them it's good to see you. Point to somebody else and tell them it's good to see you. And just know that it's good to be seen and not viewed on today. Come on, give God glory in this place on today. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. As we're preparing for worship this morning, Grace, this is Palm Sunday. This is Palm Sunday. And we remember the text in the book of John that as Jesus was coming in, the people began to wave the palms as a symbol of celebration, shouting, Hosanna. Amen. And so as we are coming in this morning, we're going to ask our deacons if they would bring the palms and we're going to bless them and give them out. That way you don't have to sit reserved today. You can shout Hosanna from the beginning of service all the way to the end. Is there anybody here in the house this morning willing to just give God praise in spite of what you've been through, in spite of what you encountered? Amen. Amen. And I would like to take this moment because I still see some faces who have celebrated life of loved ones who have transitioned. Our trustee Jackie Beeman celebrated life of her husband on yesterday and then I see trustee Bill and Mrs. Adele Lucas here who celebrated the life of his sister and then I see one who I know she had been battling just a little bit of illness but it's good to see Mrs. Dolores Stovall here. Grace is good to see all of y'all here. Turn to somebody and say it's good to be here. Come on turn to somebody else and say it's good to be here. Amen. Amen. We're going to bless these palms, and then we're going to give them out. And Grace, we're going to have a hallelujah good time on today. Amen? Amen. Let every head be bowed and every eye closed. Eternal and all-wise God, we thank you now for this privilege. Now, God, we have come on this Palm Sunday morning glorifying your name. God, we thank you for those who thought it not robbery to strip these palms. We thank you for Vera Graham and Pam Barlow. We thank you for Miss Gail Gray. We thank you for Sister Betty Conyers. We thank you for Sister Terry Henry, Miss Inez Henry. We thank you for Michelle McDowell. We thank you for Deacon Beverly Terrence. And God, we thank you for our very own chair, Deacon Sandy Jordan Gordon. God, who thought it not robbery to set it up, God, that you can set us out on today. And so God, we're glorifying your name. Bless now these branches. God, that we may have something to shout about today. That we can say Hosanna to the highest. Because God, you are coming into somebody's life on this morning. Bless right now, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we count these things done by faith. Amen. Our deacons are going to come and Dr. Blanford, if you can just give us some good music, give us some good, some uplifting music. Amen. And so they're going to come and these palms have already been blessed. Now, don't hit nobody in the head that you may be sitting in front of or behind because you done got so happy and you waving them. Amen. But even if you do hit somebody, just tell them, uh, charge it to my head and not to my heart. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We have this. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy. Come on, let's sing that together. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, let's sing that. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, 
Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of our salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of our salvation. Come on, Grace. Oh, magnify the Lord. There you go, for he is worthy to be praised. Let the Lord know you love him this morning. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy. Oh, Hosanna, blessed, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Come on, Hosanna. Oh, yeah, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of. Come on, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. For he is worthy. Yeah, oh, magnify. We come to lift his name on today. For he. Oh, come on, shout Hosanna. Come on, Grace. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Let them all in, ushers. Let them in. Whoever wants to come in, let them in. Come on, oh, magnify. Magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy. Oh, Hosanna. Blessed be. Oh, yeah. Blessed be the rock. Yeah. Oh, come on. We need some up here for the preachers. Come on, Sarah, y'all play it one time. Come on, play it one time. Come on, come on, play it one time. Celebrate on today. It's Palm Sunday. Let us get a few up here, Deacon Sandy. Come on, sing it. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy. Oh, yeah. Oh, magnify the Lord. Come on, Grace, for he make you be so. Yeah, come on, wave them. Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Come on, shout to glory. Shout for victory on this morning. Yeah, Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Come on, Grace, we got a lot to be thankful for. We got a lot to praise God for. Lift up your head, O ye gates. And be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Come on, give him glory in this place.
that went ahead of him and those that followed him. Hosanna, son of David, they shouted, blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They said, Hosanna, son of David, blessed be the name of he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 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 Almighty, all powerful. Hosanna. Master of all the stars and sand, one and only triumphant Jesus. We ask that you come by here right now. As you came down the road to Jerusalem, come down Germantown Avenue. Turn on Johnson Street and stop at 25 West. And we will shout throughout this service, Hosanna. Thank you for what you've done for us. Hosanna. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Hosanna. Bless all the preacher of the hour. Hosanna. Bless every musician. Hosanna. Fill up our cups. Hosanna. Let us run out over on Johnson Street and Germantown Avenue. Hosanna. As the traffic pass, they'll be saying, what must I do to be saved? How every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, because he heard the word Hosanna. Come by here, O Lord. Come by here, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hosanna, Hosanna, sweet Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Our hymn is, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Hosanna, oh, how I love Jesus. Because, Hosanna, he first loved me. Amen. 362. Thank you, three, six. Thank you Reverend Wallace. As Reverend Wallace is coming, um, Brother Scott Fields has informed us there's a blue Toyota Corolla license plate 00203 um, Philadelphia license plate where you see him there's a blockage outside so we invite you to do that hurry up and do it so you can get on back to worship amen all right
I know it says that I will be praying. But in reality, we will all be praying. I'll say some words up here. But in your heart, you know what you need. And God knows what you need before you even ask. So if you pray something on your own and don't even hear what I'm saying, that's all right. I must tell you one other thing, though. I was having some problems with my right foot. When you get 76, you'll know about that kind of stuff. I could barely walk around the house. And uh, I sent a text message to our chair, chair of the Board of Deacons and said, you know, I might not be able to make it in, so you better find somebody to volunteer to give the prayer. And I took a little pill and I rubbed something on it, all that stuff that you do. And about 30 minutes before I was supposed to be here, it got better. Amen. And, and those of you who saw me dancing down the aisle, going, passing out stuff, I, I mean, they said, you're going to pass out stuff. I said, I can barely walk. Yes, I can. Yeah. We serve a mighty God. When we stand up here sometimes and say, we know you're a doctor. We know you're a doctor. Yes, we serve a mighty God. And let's speak to that mighty God right now. Eternal God, our Father, we are just so glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We are so glad that you woke us up, that you brought us here in the presence of the other children of God to shake hands, to, to hug one another, and to know that we all worship a living Savior, a living Savior for whom nothing is impossible. We thank you, Lord, for this day that we celebrate because this day and several others in our, in our Christian calendar cause us to remember the love that you have shown to each and every one of us through your sacrifice, through your dedication, through your forgiveness for our sins. Mine and everybody else is up in here. You tell us in your word, Lord, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But you also tell us in your word, Lord, that there is no sin that cannot be forgiven. If we change and we turn our lives over to Jesus Christ our Lord, wonderful and miraculous things you can do and will do. We love you, Lord. We have come into this, plot, this, this house gathered in your name to worship you. So we pray, Lord, that as we worship this morning, we remember who it is that we serve. Lord God, each of us has something that we're working on, something that is causing us some difficulty, something even perhaps that, that is leading us in the direction of sin. But we know, Lord, that you have taught us to turn around, walk in a new direction, and leave sin far behind. You have taught us, Lord, that there is no illness that you cannot cure. You have taught us, Lord, that there is nothing you cannot do if we put our trust in you. So we pray this morning that in everything we say and in everything we do, we remember what you did for us, and we will be those who lead some other people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. Through our lives, through our words, through our deeds, lead others to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. This is our prayer this morning. And as we pray and as we worship, touch our hearts in a special way that we will be better when we leave this place than we were when we came in. We love you, Lord. Help us to love one another. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our God, and our guide. It is in his name that we pray. 
Let the church say amen. 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 And you know, when you're, when you're in the chancel here, you have an opportunity to see some things that everybody else can't see. And as you see the palms waving, and then you see something a little bit asynchronous, it's the children all in uniform. Palms going together, all together, waving those palms like they're in the military almost. God bless you, and we're just so thankful for this day. Thankful for this day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo. It is today.
you feel it? Can you feel it? We're going to ask everyone to stand at this time. We're going to ask the officers and uh, ushers to come forward, but please stand at this time. Officers and ushers, please come forward. Can you feel the spirit? It is that time to show the Lord how much we do love him, how much we love the Lord. And once they're in position, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Let us bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you again for this day. You have filled us with your spirit, Lord. And Lord, we are not only in a giving mood, Lord, but we want to show you how much we love you. So Lord, we just want to thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence, in your house, Lord. Lord, help us to be closer to you, to be more like you in all that we do. Show us how to love, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen.
because he's yeah. waiting for us just to say, Lord, we love you. Yeah. We got up this morning, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. And we can even play these things. I think we should clap one more time. <laughs> beautiful, 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 beautiful. The scripture reading is coming from the book of Matthew, book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. The book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. In your pew Bibles, it's on page 977. In your pew Bibles is in page 977. I would say again, if the mic wasn't up loud enough, Book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Page 977 in your pew Bible. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road. And while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, 
Hosanna, son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee, the word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. Amen, amen.
If you've been redeemed, cry holy. If you've been saved, cry holy. If you've been healed, cry holy. I count this assignment an honor and a privilege to stand before you, especially on Palm Sunday, where everyone is high and lifted up. I thank our senior pastor, J. Henry Buck, Jr., the associate ministers, and you, the congregation, who I consider to be family. Thank you. If I could carry a tune, I would sing this. <laughs> yeah. I used to sing it at work, and my coworkers would be like, mm-mm, cut it. And I would say, well, it sounds like a bird to die. Your grace and your mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too for your grace and your mercy brought me through. Is there anyone else that his grace and his mercy has brought you through? You can't sit on it. He's healed you from your sickness. That accident that you drove by, it could have been you. But because of his grace and his mercy, because of his grace and his mercy, whew, brought me through, brought me through. Pastor keep telling me to sing, sing, sing. Come on up here and sing with me. <laughs> yes, sing with me. I'm living this moment because 
because of you. Hey, hallelujah! I want to thank you and praise you too for your great mercy brought me through. Go ahead, Sarah. We could never thank him enough because he's been so good to us. So, so good to us. That breath that you're taking right now is because of his grace and his mercy. You're able to stand because of his grace and his mercy. You're able to wave your hands and shout hallelujah because of his grace and his mercy. You're able to get into your cars and drive to your beautiful homes where there's food, heat, water, electricity because of his grace and his mercy. We can never, ever thank him enough. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. His grace and his mercy. Mm. Grace, getting what we don't deserve. And mercy, not getting what we do deserve. <laughs> if you don't know the difference, you know it now. Welcome to the visitors. Are there any visitors here today? Just raise your hand, stand up. You want to, amen. We welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you to the best church in Germantown, in the city of Philadelphia. We welcome you, Grace Baptist Church of Germantown. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, I accept this assignment humbly, God asking you to see my heart. Now, God, as we sit and listen for a word from you, God, give your people ears to hear. Give people eyes to see you. Give my heart to receive and a mind made up, God, to know that they are worthy that you are worthy of all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As I was sitting there in the seat, I was saying I was going to get up and just say, okay, we're going to do the benediction. And we could leave. But I know that you guys want to hear a word from God. So here we go. In the month of March, there has been several award shows held, the Oscars, the NAACP Image Awards, the GLAAD Awards, Black Women in Hollywood Awards, and ending this month, there will be the Mark Twain Prize Ceremony. Before each of these award shows or ceremonies start, there's usually what is called a red carpet event that is held. The red carpet event is where the celebrities and awardees gather prior to entering the venue. It is on the red carpet where those in attendance may be interviewed, photographed and cheered on by the crowd. Before there was a red carpet event at award shows, the original use of the red carpet was set out to mark the route that the heads of state and other dignitaries were to take during ceremonial and formal occasions. In our scripture for today, we see that there wasn't a red carpet laid out to mark the route for Jesus as he arrived in the city of Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. Upon hearing that Jesus was coming, the people of Jerusalem began to lay down their cloaks and spread palm branches on the road ahead of them. They also waved the palms, shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna is not only a shout of praise, but it is also an appeal to God for deliverance. We must remember that the Jewish people were under the rule of Rome. They wanted the Roman occupation to be out of Israel. With this in mind, they believed that Jesus would deliver them from the Romans. But they didn't understand that Jesus was a deliverer, just not the kind they thought he was. Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem was the beginning of his sacrifice for not, for not, for not only their sins, but for our sins as well. 
Now, having been under the thumb of the Roman Empire for over 100 years, the Jews were looking for a new beginning. Say new beginning. They were looking for their deliverer. So as the crowd gathered on this particular Sunday, they gathered in anticipation with both hope and joy, for they had heard how Jesus had quieted the naysayers, how he had healed people, and that he had even raised the dead. So in their minds, he was their king, their deliverer. But most of all, maybe for now on this particular day, the people were mindful of what the prophets Isaiah and Zechariah had said about the king who was to come. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now, remember, Jesus sent two disciples out to get the donkey and the colt. He told them that if anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them. Now, let's think about this for a moment. This event is written in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In Mark chapter 11, verses 4 through 5, it says that they went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people were standing there. They asked, what are you doing untying that colt? The disciples answered, as Jesus had told them to, that the Lord needs them. Let's just stop for a moment. Do you wonder or think that those people went back to their homes and their communities and told others that the Lord was coming? Would you? Would you tell someone that the Lord is coming? Because time is winding up. And he is coming back. And we don't know the day nor the hour. So would you tell someone that the Lord is coming? Amen. I heard one of the young people say yes. I asked this question because as I was reading the different accounts of Jesus coming into Jerusalem, there is no mention as to how the crowd knew that Jesus was coming. Perhaps the people who questioned the two disciples remembered what the prophets had said and ran back home to their communities, telling them the king is coming, the one that Isaiah and Zechariah talked about. Amen? So we see that Jesus arrives in Jerusalem, just as the prophets predicted. He is surrounded by the crowd. He has people behind him and in front of him. The atmosphere is filled with excitement, for the people believed that Jesus was the one who would give them a new beginning. The people believed that Jesus would give them a new beginning. How many of you would like a new beginning? You know, a do-over, where we could go back and do something or some things differently. If we look back over our lives, there may have been a time, two, three, or even more where we left God out of the equation. And in hindsight, we say, if I had only talked to the Lord about this situation. Unfortunately, we can't go back. But what we can do is go forward with a mindset of having a new beginning, a new beginning where we are mindful to put God first. It is because of the hope of a new beginning, no longer to be under the rule of the Roman Empire, that those in the crowd began to lay down their coats on the road to usher Jesus into Jerusalem. The laying down of the coat was the red carpet of that day, which meant that there was a king arriving. This was also a symbol that the people were willing to give all that they had while acknowledging that Jesus was who they needed. Now think about it. Back in biblical times, they probably only had one coat. How many coats do you have? I don't even want to tell you how tight my closet is with coats. But also, the coat was known as a garment but you can also have a coat to hide or conceal something. You know that habit or attitude that you don't want anyone to know about? The word tells us in Luke chapter 8, verses 17, for all that is secret will eventually be brought into the open, and everything that is concealed will be brought to light and made known to all. With this in mind, family, I ask, are you willing to give all that you have to God so that you too can have a new beginning? Are you willing to give all that you have 
to God so that you can have a new beginning. I'm glad no one's answering because we are quick to say yes. <laughs> Walk out this door and, and don't do it. So it's something that we need to think about. I used to tell the Sunday school class that I could never sing I Surrender All. I, I would get choked up. Sarah, I went to sing it one time. This was before I came down to the pool, but I was up in the balcony. And this song was playing, and I got choked in my throat. And the Holy Spirit was like, uh-uh, don't you dare, because you're not surrendering all. We have to be mindful of the songs that we sing, because they are a part of the worship. They are a part of the praise. They are not just words. That's a promise. You're telling God, I surrender all to you. And that's a hard thing to do. That is hard to do, to surrender all to God, because we think that we know all. We may not say it, but we act it. You may be asking, what is the all that I have for God, who is the creator and owner of heaven and earth and everything in it? The answer is simple. God desires you and me without our concealed things. Because if we think about it, we can agree with King David, who declared to God, and I believe more so to remind himself in Psalm chapter 139, verses 1 through 4. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. How often do we forget that? That God knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows our sitting down, our rising up. He knows the thoughts we have from afar. And he can discern our going out. He's familiar with all our ways because he created us in our mother's womb. So he knows us. He knitted us together. Amen. So with this scripture in mind, family, let's lay down our clothes. Those thoughts, habits, and attitudes that are not pleasing to God. May we do so by repenting before God so that we can truly begin to have a new beginning with Christ from this Palm Sunday going forward. The red carpet moment on the Palm Sunday of Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem is further advanced by not only the lying the laying down of palms on the road, but the waving them as well. The tradition of waving the palm branches are a sign of rejoicing, which goes back to the Old Testament. It was during the Festival of Tabernacles that the Lord instructed Moses to tell the Israelites that on the first day, they are to take fruit from the trees along with palm fronds and other leafy branches and rejoice before the Lord for seven days. And you guys were waving those palms. You were rejoicing before the Lord. How many days or times do you just wave your hand in your home and rejoice and thank God? How many times during the day do you do that? You don't have to be in this sacred space to thank God. There was a time when I was going to the laundromat, pulling my little shopping cart in West Philly. And then every so often, I, you know, where I am now, I have a washer and a dryer, and I turn the knob to the washing machine, and I just start shouting, thanking God for the washing machine. It may sound simple or small to people, but everything that we have, everything, it's because of God's grace and mercy that we have it, not because of our degrees. I know some of you can go home right now and pick and choose whether you want steak, fish, or chicken. What vegetables you want. And when it was raining yesterday, you had shelter. 
As I, as I looked out my front window and saw all how that rain was coming, I started praying for the homeless people, for people that don't have shelter, that are living in cardboard boxes or under the L's. That rain was something yesterday. And if you did go out, you had a car to get into and possibly an umbrella or two. God's been good to us. It's the small things. It's the small things. Just like the Israelites from the past, the people who are witnesses to Jesus' arrival are rejoicing for their king has arrived, just like the prophet said. They laid down their coats and palms on the road while shouting Hosanna. They are caught up in the moment. They are joyful and excited about their king's arrival, for surely he will deliver them from the Roman rulers. This red carpet moment marks the beginning of what we know as the Holy Week or Week of Passion. We know that as the week progresses, some of the same people who were shouting Hosanna and waving the palms have become disgruntled. Their attitudes changed because Jesus was calling them out on their stuff. From his red carpet moment leading into Jerusalem, in the upcoming days of Passion Week, Jesus had cleared out the temple, evaded the traps set by the priests. Ain't that something? The priests were trying to trap Jesus. Knowing what was to come, Jesus continued to teach while on the Mount of Olives. He warned the people against the Pharisees. In other words, Jesus was calling a problem for those who were in power. Those in power didn't want their power over the people taken from them. And there are people even in 2024 who are in power and don't want their power taken from them or who have had their power taken from them and want to regain their power. You all know who I'm talking about. So come November 2024, you know what you got to do. We can't let it happen. We cannot sit back and say, my vote doesn't count. Your vote does count. And our ancestors were hosed down, bitten by dogs, beaten for the right to vote. We need to vote. Jesus, along with the disciples, participated in the Passover meal in the upper room. After the meal, Jesus and the disciples go to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he prays. You know, in John chapter 17, Jesus prays for us. Isn't that amazing? Over 2,000 years ago, he had you on his mind, Deacon Patrice, Deacon Sandy, Jordan Gordon. He had all of us on his mind. He said, I pray for those who will come to know me because of what the disciples have done. They discipled people. Amen. Having been arrested, betrayed, deserted, and turned on by some of the same people who welcomed him into Jerusalem with shouts of Hosanna, guess what they were now shouting? Crucify. What a difference a few days makes. Even in biblical times, there was the practice of cancel culture. You know what that is? You get canceled out by culture by saying something that nobody agrees with. So from Sunday to Friday, Jesus was doing what Jesus does best. Come Friday, he was canceled out. Crucify him. Just like they were yelling Hosanna, they were yelling even louder, crucify him. Crucify him. As the New Testament church, we often look down on those who had the opportunity to actually witness Jesus' ministry of healing, teaching, and rebuking firsthand. And when I just said the sentence before that, that they were yelling, crucify him, crucify him, even louder than they did, Hosanna, Hosanna, I looked at some of your faces and I saw you shaking your heads and dislike, but we do the same thing. We do the same thing. Let's be truthful here. We wonder how could they one day accept Jesus as their Messiah and then in just a matter of days reject him. In reality, we are no better than those witnesses. We wave our palms and shout hallelujah when all is going well. 
We were in here high and lifted up before I stood before this pulpit. Now tomorrow, let your car break down. Some of you might say a cuss word or two. We all do it. Just say, Lord, forgive me. But let something go wrong. Let something go wrong when you go out into that parking lot. Somebody done blocked you in. Oh, it's going to be a problem. You done forgot all about the waving and the saying Hosanna and the holy, holy, holy. You're probably saying holy heck no. Not today. And we go around here. <laughs> oh. When life throws us a curveball or we hit a roadblock, we become like those who were witnesses to Jesus' ministry, up close and personal. We act as though someone has stolen our ice cream. We go stomping around with our lips poked out and our heads hanging low. We throw our hands in the air. Why has God forsaken us? We forget what is written in Hebrews 13, 5b. Because God said, never will I leave you, nor will I forsake you. It is because we are children of God that we have not been, nor will we ever be forsaken. We are saved by the one who went to Calvary on our behalf. They nailed his hands and feet to a cross. They placed the crown of thorns on his head. They pierced him in his side. He hung his head and he died. But thank God. What do they always say? That's not how the story ends. Well, we know that in three short days, the tomb was empty for he lives. Jesus lives. He is sitting at the right hand of God advocating for you and I. Although every day isn't Palm Sunday, we can treat it as such. For with each new day that we are allowed the gift of opening our eyes and taking a breath, we can choose to make it a red carpet kind of day. We get to choose if we are going to follow Jesus like the crowd did on that first Palm Sunday. Therefore, as we usher in each new day, let's remember that Jesus is walking with us into this new day. And it can be a new beginning for each of us. With each new day, there are new mercies to see and experience. So if we are able to see a new day with new mercies, then we can definitely start with a new beginning by laying down those things that are concealed, that are not pleasing to God. You know those thoughts and actions that we have that aren't pleasing to God, gossiping, complaining, comparing ourselves to other, unforgiveness, jealousy, stubbornness, or our judgments of others, and whatever else we may think or say, or do that is not pleasing to God. Only you know that. And when you confess to God of your sins, he doesn't go run around telling anybody. He keeps it to himself. So who else better to tell your faults to, your shortcomings to, but to God? If we allow ourselves the liberty of being totally honest with God and ourselves every new day, we can definitely start the day with a new beginning laying down our coats, and then we can truly, truly wave our palms with anticipation, joy, and in victory, because we are going to have a red carpet kind of day. Every day can be a Palm Sunday for us. We can honor the arrival of Jesus into our lives each and every day. With God residing in each of us, we can truly be the light that is needed in this dark world. Amen. We are needed in this world. We've seen with the last few weeks all the things that have been happening in the news with our young people. My daughter always says, you watching the news? And I want to know what's going on. But then it breaks my heart to hear of a 15-year-old, a 16-year-old having a machine gun or whatever the gun is and shooting at other kids for whatever reason. We need to be praying for our city. We need to be praying for our youth. We need to cry out to God to heal the land because trouble is brewing and it only is going to get worse. And we, got, we have to stop hiding behind closed doors and in sanctuaries and go out into our neighborhoods and into our communities and encourage the young people. Even if you see them out on the street, hi, how you doing? 
just, just a simple smile. Let them know someone cares, someone sees them. Because right now, all they're seeing is their TikTok stuff. And TikTok is not it. It's the Bible, the word, the light in us. We don't have to quote scriptures to everybody that we see. If we live our life according to how God wants us to live our life, we are the Bible. Amen? So Palm Sunday can be a, a new beginning for us, a, a dedication of going out and, and letting others know that he lives. Yes, he went through all of that that week, but he didn't stay on the cross. The tomb was empty. He sits at the right hand of the Father. He advocates for us, whether we're good, bad, or indifferent. God loves us all. So who are we to say who God can love? Because sometimes, you know, we get, we get visitors in this church, and sometimes they don't come back. They don't come back. They join. They come walking down that aisle. Then we don't see them no more. They go out the back door. Why? What are we not doing? What should we be doing? I'm not perfect. And if God can love me, I'm not perfect, and I'm not going to ever, ever tell anybody I'm perfect. I'm a Christian saved by grace and mercy, and I have faith, and I know that he lives, and I'm a work in progress till the day I close my eyes. But as long as I live, I'm always going to try to shower love on each and everybody, every person, because you're a child of God. Amen? So from this day forward, Let's have a new beginning. It starts with you, 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 and me. Let's be a little bit kinder, a little more thoughtful. Sometimes when you think about a person and you hesitate to call because you don't know what to say, call anyway. The Holy Spirit will give you what to say because the Holy Spirit has not put that person in your heart and on your mind for nothing. And if you aren't brave enough to call, say a prayer. Because you don't know what that person is going through. But we are a community of faith. And we have to have faith that God will hold us together. Amen? This was something that the Holy Spirit just gave me to say. It wasn't in the script. In my preaching. But I pray that something that I said touched your heart. Something made you think. Yeah, we, we, we always ready for the high and lifted up moments. But when them down and out moments come, woo, we like a little two-year-old having a tantrum. But God is with you. God loves you. And I love you too, and there's nothing that any of you can do about it. The doors of the church are open. I've noticed that most churches that I go into that have carpet in their sanctuary you see the red or in the shade that could be in the red family. I often wonder if this is intentional, but in my Holy Spirit imagination, the red carpet is laid out for us so that we'll, when we come to the front of the church, it symbolizes that God has laid out the red carpet. So when that man, woman, or child comes forward to accept Christ, they are being led to a new beginning. A new beginning where they can lay down their sins and pick up their palms to wave with joy, knowing that God has forgiven them and will continue to forgive them of their sins, along with the gift of eternal life and the Holy Spirit to guide them along their journey. To wave the palms with joy and anticipation that life will never be the same. those new mercies that you see day after day. God is faithful. Some of us have driven past accidents, and if you had it left a little sooner, it could have been you. The doctor told you you had a certain illness, 
and that it couldn't be healed. But look at you. You're healed. Is there one who doesn't know Jesus? Hosanna, the son of David, who came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Is there one? God is calling you. You're not here by happenstance or a coincidence. God wants you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to encourage you. And he wants to strengthen you, mind, body, and soul. That's how good God is. He cares for the whole person. He doesn't care if you're tore up from the floor up is in regards to what people say. You are precious in his sight. And he wants you to come to him repenting of your sins, asking for forgiveness, knowing that he loves you. In our family situations, we know that if we don't do or say certain things, the love seems uh, conditional. But with God, it's unconditional love. The word tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Who doesn't want that type of love in their life? There may be someone here who was in church but had what they call church hurt because people hurt people. People be peopling. Sometimes they say things that are harsh. Sometimes it's not even about you. It's about what they're going through. But there may be someone here who has had a bad experience in the body of Christ. Won't you come? Let us love you back to health with the aid of the Holy Spirit. He's always providing. We may not have an overflow, but we have just what we need. Some people complain, I don't have this, I don't have that. And I say, switch it around and thank God for what you do have. Why would somebody give you something if you're always complaining? Thank God for what you do have and watch him multiply it. Great is his faithfulness. Now, earlier, everyone was waving the palms. They were so happy. Wave your palms now. God has spoken. How many of you want a new beginning? How many of you want to lay down those things that are you're concealing, that nobody knows about? How many of you want to rejoice? Because this is your new beginning from this day forward. God says, I will go with you. I will go before you. I will stand beside you. I will have your back. But rejoice knowing that I died for you. For I had no sin. And now you have the gift of eternal life. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Hosanna. 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 Yeah, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that you thought it not robbery to die for us on the cross before we were even in our mother's wombs. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us out, for saving us, for blessing us, for strengthening us, for providing for us, God. You're a good God. You're a loving God. 
We can never ever thank you enough, Hosanna. Hallelujah. Hey, God. Glory to your name, God. Every day is Palm Sunday. Every day is Easter. For he lives. There may be someone here who needs prayer. If you would like to have prayer, you can come up front and associate ministers will pray with you and for you. I truly believe that every time that we enter this place and even in our homes and wherever we go, we should always be prayerful because the word says pray without ceasing. So where else better than the house of the Lord? Because remember, when he went into Jerusalem and he turned those tables over, he said, my house will be the house of prayer. Amen. And as people come forward and get prayer, you who are in the pew should be praying, interceding on their behalf. You don't always have to know what someone's going through. God knows. You can ask the Holy Spirit to have his way in that person's life. Amen. Amen. I'm going to call Sister Cora Barlow out and her son. She had us praying for her son and look at her son now. Walking, smiling. Use of his limbs. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. 
Lord, we thank you for the prayers that have been said on behalf of your sons and your daughters, God. We thank you, Lord, that they will see the result of those prayers in the upcoming days, God. But as they sit late in the midnight hour, God, and feel like they are all alone, remind them that you are with them, God. Give them a song to sing, a verse to remember that you love them and you care for them. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, praise. Let us give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise. Here is the power of prayer. When you have prayed, it don't, it's not that you walk back and God is not going to do it. For the Bible says, faith without works. So now you got to trust that God is working, but you got work to do as well. Because the prayers of the righteous avail it much. God is not done with you yet. No matter what the case may be. We certainly thank God for this preacher. Come on, let's thank God for this preacher on Palm Sunday. Amen. Stay right there, Sarah. I like this. Because there's something about worship that's when the spirit is still hovering. The spirit is still moving. This, this is just a glimpse of where God is leading us. And Grace, look at the number of visitors that are here today. Come on, thank God for the visitors that are here. In fact, not to put them on the spot, but all of our visitors, if you're visiting us for the first time, if you would stand, if you would just stand, if you're visiting us, come on, praise God for, look at that grace. Come on, praise God. Praise God. And please, before you leave, please make sure that we meet you so we can shake your hand, but we can thank God for you. Amen, my brother. Sometimes God send people, we talked about this in Sunday school. We've forgotten about testimonies. God has delivered some folk and we haven't heard testimonies in a long time. Because when we get delivered, we forget that others need deliverance. But the kingdom is still growing and God is still adding. I, I was, I was, they, what they, um, what is the thing called? Uh, the, yeah, the Apple Watch. <laughs> if you got an Apple Watch, it has a, a Siri on it. And when you're talking or when it hears things, it'll vibe and say something. Well, mine triggered when... We were waving the palms and it sent me a message saying that the decimal in the space that you are in is too high. That's what it said. It said the sound of the place that you are in is too high. If you don't get out of there, it could cause hearing loss. Watch this. There are some things you don't need to hear. You don't need to hear that Satan is telling you you can't make it. You don't need to hear that there is no hope. You don't need to hear that things are not going to get better. You need the decimals to stay high as they can. It's Holy Week coming up this week. And just to share with you a few things that we still have going on. On Thursday evening, Thursday evening, our very own Reverend Brian Wallace We'll be preaching our Monday, Thursday service. We invite you to come at 7 o'clock. On Friday, we have the seven last words here with some of the greatest preachers in this nation, our very own associate ministers here at Grace Baptist Church of Germantown. Starting at 12 o'clock, we invite you to come. 
And then grace on Saturday. The Lord led us two times before to do an anointing service and the Lord blessed. And so Reverend Dr. Kershaw is going to lead us again on Saturday at 9 to 11 to do another anointing service where we anoint the people and we anoint the place where we worship. Then we are coming back on Sunday to qualify and justify that he is risen. That he is risen. He is not dead. He is risen. And so, Grace, let us continue to pray for one another. I, it was on my heart, Grace. I, and I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot, but there's a population in Grace, in this congregation. There are a lot of persons that are from, like, Jamaica and places in the Caribbean, the islands. They've never had the chance to really see, or we haven't, really had a chance to worship in the diaspora of where they are from, which is a part of who we are. What would it look like if we recognize, realize, and appreciate it? the Caribbean context of fellowship and worship where we celebrate Christ. I say that, Grace, because we are a diverse group of people. And what makes worship so rich is that we can come and experience and encounter God in several different ways. I'm glad God is not the same yesterday, today. Glad that he stays like he is, but that makes us change to conform to his image. As we're preparing to depart from this place, but never from his presence, there's a lot going on in our city. You see the number of shootings, you see the number hard times that are going on. But Grace, I want to let you know that God is still blessing in our city. God is still blessing right here at the corner of 25 West Johnson Street. So I want you to know this. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift up your head. You have nothing to be ashamed about. Lift up your head. O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and allow the King of glory to come in. Reverend Blackson is going to come and give us our benediction. When we leave out of this place today, let us leave out of here with joy. As a matter of fact, let's make a train and shut Johnson Street down. No, I'm just playing. Yes. But don't put it past me. Let us leave out of this place knowing that we serve a risen God, but also knowing that the Jesus in me also loves the Jesus in you. Amen. May we please stand. Look to your neighbor and say rejoice. It's a new day. It's a new beginning, for he is risen. The tomb is empty. He is risen. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, we thank you for all that we have experienced during this worship service. Lord, we thank you that we will go out of this place different than when we came in, God. May we continue to rejoice and share the good news from this day forward, God. And may we go in peace and love, for you are our Savior and the lover of our very souls. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.